In 1956, when war broke out in the Suez Canal region, Lester B. Pearson, foreign minister at the time, recommended the creation of an emergency force in a last-ditch effort to secure peace in the area. My own country now maintains forces trained and equipped which can be placed at the disposal of the United Nations on short notice for service anywhere in the world. The United Nations agreed. It became the first ever peacekeeping force and a blueprint for the future. Canada is a middle power. We're known as a nation that expresses goodwill towards others. We don't have colonial baggage. We have a multicultural society. In many ways, Canadian peacekeepers set the gold standard. Canada was the largest contributor to peacekeeping during the Cold War and for the first few years afterwards. During the the era when peacekeeping missions had a great deal of success, uh, they were basically watching uh, peace uh, that had been declared or tense truces that were on the edge. Missions were mostly straightforward, maintain the peace. The Cyprus, which uh, uh, 1974, I believe, the UN sent a mission into Cyprus when Greece and Turkey nearly came to a war. Uh, all the powers of the world wanted peace on that island. Peacekeeping went in and peacekeeping has functioned there largely peacefully. Yugoslavia changed the game entirely. Do I want to go there? <laughs> if it'll get food into uh, the civilians that are there and need it, yeah, I'll go. It's not that I want to go, but in, uh, in the aid of other people, I will. Contrast that with the peacekeeping that happened after the fall of communism in 1991, where you had the former Yugoslavia, for instance. Peace missions were sent in and very quickly uh, evolved into uh, desperate attempts to prevent mass civil war, genocide, terror attacks, and really be became combat situation. What was once a mission to maintain the peace that was already in place became a mission to create it. Rwanda, 1993-94, uh, where you again led to, into a, a complete breakdown of order. The peacekeeping mission was swept aside by uh, people intent on genocide. Somalia in 1993-94, uh, which again ended in uh, chaos. So you get one mission after another after the end of the kind of solidity of the Cold War that, uh, that has ended in extremely fraught conditions. By 2001, Canada's mission looked a lot less like peacekeeping and a little more like combat. With the Conservative Party, um, basically uh, up until last year, uh, there was quite a distaste, I think, for peacekeeping. A saying began to creep in, if there is uh, peace, then why do you need peacekeepers? If there's no peace, then peacekeepers can't enforce it. But last year, the Liberals were elected with a promise to get back into peacekeeping, or a modern version of it anyway. Our, our troops, our development workers, our diplomats uh, are extraordinarily valuable on the world stage and uh, we're always being asked to do more. It's part self-interest and part national pride and, and uh, a certain sense that we'll probably do a good job of it. But these kinds of missions may be much different than those of the past. The missions are more dangerous, they uh, are more robust, they are more multidimensional. There's a threat of IED, improvised explosive devices. Um, this can happen similarly as in Afghanistan on the road or going into a market or booby-trapped uh, areas. So they, the, the soldiers have to be extra careful. Despite the potential dangers, Canada is now moving back into what many believe is part of our traditional military role. We have to, at some rate, play a much more significant role than we have now. And uh, we want to go into it most carefully, but certainly I think uh, our option of staying away from peacekeeping has run out. There's a humanitarian imperative. We just can't sit back and watch the TV footage and say it's got nothing to do with us. A, because it has a lot to do with us. These areas um, are cradles for diseases like Ebola, for crime and drugs, and their well-known trade, uh, drug trade routes that are running through Africa, and also for terrorism. If, um, if we don't support the peace in these areas, then they will come back to haunt us.